Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott. You know, let's cut to the chase. I've got a bit of a beef here with you guys. Normally, I try to do my VRs at the end of the month, but I don't know. There must be something in the water because you guys are asking for a ton of VRs right now, and they're due in the middle of the month. So thanks for being a bunch of jerks and making me do these now. So without further ado, here are a bunch of VRs for a bunch of jerks. Um, well... I guess there is something going on at the end of the month that might make it hard to do these later. So I don't know, we got VRs to do, let's do it. Everybody loves Dylan at Double D and he's my best friend and he's still a jerk. Dylan wants to see cards that go together. I guess I can do that. Um, I'm gonna go at this two different ways. So I've got my picture pack cards. I'm gonna pair those with their 51 Bowman counterparts. I just love seeing the photo used to make these cool little paintings. So we've got Jim Hegan with Jim Hegan. Here's Thurman Tucker with Thurman Tucker. And Bobby Avia with Bobby Avia. Let's see, here's Bob Lemon and Bob Lemon. And Larry Doby with Larry Doby. Or you could be a jerk and say, those aren't really cards, Scott. They're photos. And I'd say, fine, we'll do it this way, which is more in honor of Dylan anyway. So I have my 3D 80s kit custom. I'll pair that with my Mr. Rogers card that I bought because I was inspired by John. And here's Baseball Collector. And this signed Joe Sewell Perez postcard, something that Mike collects. And I actually bought this one from him. And here's Dustin and Blake. Dustin inspired me to super collect Alvaro Espinosa, even though he doesn't have enough cards to super collect technically. But Dustin sent me the sweet Alvaro postcard. Look at that face, the face of a champion right there. Ah, uh, my man Jake from Legends Never Die. Here's his custom 56. And here's my very first Redman card. And Jake collects those and he loves those. And he sent this one to me. Plus, I was around when he bought an unopened Redman pack. And it happens to be Al Rosen. And I'll pair this Eddie card with the signed Earl Averill postcard. Eddie did not give me this, but Earl reminds me of Eddie because Eddie's the only other guy I know of that has any interest in the Cleveland Hall of Famer who just so happens to hail from Eddie's home state, Washington. And a fitting into this, I have a Dylan card and a very cool card straight out of Dylan's collection, the 75 Indians team card, which might pop up in another VR later. Okay, that was kind of fun. Maybe I'll lighten up a little bit here. Okay, what's next? Oh, my best friends from Three Good Nerds wanted to see baseball lineups made from fictional movie characters. What a bunch of jerks. But I do love baseball movies, and I do love this idea, so here's what I came up with. At Catcher, kind of a sappy choice, but he did once ask my son to have a catch, which was completely surreal. John Kinsella from Field of Dreams. Hey, Dad? You want to have a catch? I'd like that. At first base, the guy who replaced World Series hero Jack Elliott in Mr. Baseball and someone who looks amazingly like Frank Thomas, Ricky Davis. That's that rookie first baseman, Davis. Over the palm tree. Again. Ah, don't worry about it, Jack. The guy's got an obvious weakness. What's that? Kryptonite. <laughs> Second base is kind of tricky. It was my favorite position growing up, but Hollywood doesn't seem to agree that it's that exciting. But I found a great one who can also clean up the locker room if needed in Tony Maselli from Who's the Boss? This is my new housekeeper. <laughs> housekeeper? Uh, Angela, this is the ugliest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm going a little younger at short, but he's big on attitude and he wears a great hat. We got Tanner Boyle from the Bad News Bears. And nobody's going to mess with that side of the infield because at third, you can't tell him he's not Mike Schmidt. It's Sergeant Cordell Walker from Walker, Texas Ranger. Ugh. Ow. Hurts, huh? <laughs> In left field, only because it wasn't really clear where he actually played. But I got to go with a guy who was better than Babe Ruth, Thelonious Myrtle from The Sandlot. You knew Babe Ruth? George? I sure did. And he knew me. He was almost as great a hitter as I was. In center field, we got a guy who's supposed to be a mix between Jackie Robinson and Willie Mays with Esquire Joe Calloway from the Bingo Long, Traveling All-Stars, and Motor Kings. Say, kid, does you do this constantly? <laughs> no, sir. 
I does it all the time. And in right field from the absolute greatest baseball movie ever made, I gotta go with Pedro Serrano from Major League. It's very bad to steal Joe Boo's run. He's very bad. At DH, we got an old timer, but hopefully not playing the field will extend his career a little bit. It's gotta be the best there ever was, Roy Hobbs from The Natural. I've got four pitchers, starting with Wiley veteran Billy Chabel from For Love of the Game. We don't stink right now. We're the best team in baseball right now, right this minute, because of you. You're the reason. We're not going to screw that up. We're going to be awesome for you right now. He seems to daydream and get a little distracted sometimes. So I've also got Ebby Calvin Nuke Lelouch from Bull Durham, who seems to work well with Kevin Costner. Strikeouts are boring. Besides that, they're fascists. Throw some ground balls. It's more democratic. What's this guy know anyway? He's so great, how come he's been in the minors for 10 years? A guy based on former fireballer Sudden Sam McDowell, we got Sam Malone from Cheers. Hey, hey, uh, I know you. Uh, uh, what's your name? Sam Malone. Yeah, that's it. And closing it out, I'm going to go with Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down. Superstar! How many comments on the steroid allegations? I said I'm not steroid! Had to use a short clip for that one. And the last part of this is that I have to shout someone out to give them an entry as well. So, um, Tony Black of TB's TTM Autographs, congratulations, you are my best friend today. Yeesh, we still got a long way to go, but my best friend Jack from Cracker Jack Cards, he wants to see our displays. All right, you know what, this one is easy. Jack, you're not a jerk. Let's take a little field trip. I don't have a card room, but I've got a stairwell. So let's start with the balls here. We got Feller, Boudreaux, Doby, Rosen, Score, and Calavito. Ray Fossey, Gaylord Perry, Dennis Eckersley, Super Joe, Len Barker, and Bly Levin. Here's Corey Snyder, Phil Necro, Albert Bell, Jim Tomey, and Vizquel. And then there's Manny Ramirez, Oral Hershiser, and Cookie Carrasco. And finally, Terry Francona. Over here, I've got some photos and some art. There's a Calavito Auto I've had since I was a kid, Tristan McKenzie, Cy Young and Bob Feller, Andre Semenis, and little satchel there. I left some room on the wall because I've got a lot of art that I still want to make yet, and I want to hang that up here. Over here is my T206 Naps team. Uh, up there is the Piedmont sign. Here's Neil Ball, Heine Berger, Joe Birmingham, Bill Bradley, and J.J. Clark. And then you got Ted Easterly, Elmer Flick, Wilbur Good, Bill Henchman, and Eddie Joss. There's Nap Lajaway, Glenn Liebhart, George Perring, and Bob Rhodes, and George Stovall, and Terry Turner. And there's my sweet cat pack, and Tris, and Kovaleski. And these are Duke Stamps cards, and there are some Diamond Stars there. Okay, over here, this one is set up by Decade on top. We've got some 40s cards, a bunch of guys you've never heard of, and Joe Gordon and Lou Boudreau. Next row is the 50s. We've got Mike Garcia, Bob Feller, Doby Feller, Satchel Page, Bob Lemon, Al Rosen, and Rocky Calavito. And here's the 60s cards, Don Mossy, Sam McDowell, Mossy, some stand-ups, Tiant, Rocky, and Feller. And then two cards from the 70s, two cards from the 80s, two cards from the 90s, CC from the 2000s, and Jose for the 2010s. So there you go, Jack. That was a lot of fun. Hope I didn't make you too dizzy. This one is from my best friend Scott from Stooks Baseball Cards and Curiosities. He wants to hear about our favorite meetings with athletes. And I'm going to show this Denny McLean because uh, Scott also showed Denny McLean. He was the first guy I met right after COVID restrictions started going away. And I was eager to get back out there to card shows and stuff. And Denny was signing and I did this piece. And that dude just loves his inscriptions. And he seemed to be tickled with this piece I did for him. But one of my favorites still has to be Super Joe Charbonneau. As you can see, there were still COVID restrictions, but that didn't stop Joe from being awesome. Well, it's a great honor to sign this. Well, thank you for it. really is awesome. I love it. Thanks. Thank you. I headed down to Columbus to meet Joe and get my artist proof signed. Awesome job. Look at that. Very nice. 
You can't tell, but under that mask, I've got the biggest smile on my face. Thanks, I'm buddy. totally geeking out about this one. I'm going to picture you guys standing there. Or should I stand up? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. In that way. Joe is quite possibly the nicest yeah. athlete I've ever met. He's such a good dude, and that just makes this project all the more special for me. All right, thanks. Will you do a fake handshake to the glass? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you gotta, hey, you got to improvise now. He's uh, super friendly, and this was the first one of these that I was paid to do a signed and numbered edition. This was to commemorate the 40th anniversary of his Rookie of the Year, and he was just a really great guy and really fun to work with. Okay, what's next on my list? Oh yeah, my bestie David from Three Rivers Card Collector. He wants to see some uh, red, white, and blue cards in honor of the 4th of July. So, you know, France gave us the Statue of Liberty and they also gave us Napoleon Lajouet. So I have a red nap and a blue nap, but that's not enough. So how about some Olympic cards? Here's uh, Charlie Nagy and Corey Snyder. And I got to meet Corey once and I did some Olympic art for him to sign. And you just saw this ball in my case, but it's an 84 Olympic ball with the red and blue laces. So uh, USA, 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 next VR. All right, getting towards the end here. My best friend Jason, or Mr. Fisherbike, if you're nasty, he wants to see our top five or ten vintage cards. What? All right, dude, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call you out on this one. You can, you can be more creative than that. Now, you did say they didn't have to be our most expensive cards, so how about I show you my top five favorite common vintage cards? I know I feel like I kind of show the same cards over and over every month because my collection is so focused. So here are my top five vintage cards of common players. Number five, 1958 Topps Don Mossy. I have multiple copies of this card and you know I love me some Don Mossy and this one's my favorite. Number four, 49 Leaf Jim Hegan. I show this one off all the time and I'm sorry, but I just think it's a fantastic looking card and Hegan was no slouch. Number three, 1953 Bowman Mike Garcia. This one or this team set expanded my horizons. I was only doing T206 cards at the time, but I just had to start collecting 53 Bowman as well. And this was the first one that I bought. And it was also the first 53 Bowman that Alex from Bowman 53 bought for his set in the same grade even. So that makes me think of him too. Number two, T206, Ted Easterly. I bought this one in 2018, and it was the very first baseball card I had bought since 1994. So this card was the card that restarted my hobby, and funny enough, this was the first T206 card that the authors of this book bought as well. And number one, 1941 Playball Raleigh Hemsley. Uh, now, I did a video about Raleigh a few years ago, but I found his story fascinating. He was an alcoholic and he kind of brought Alcoholics Anonymous out of his infancy and into the public light. And AA actually started in a local Akron hospital, the one where I was born actually. You know, doing that, he helped millions of people. I'm not an alcoholic, but someone very close to me is and they helped him turn his life around. So this card makes me think of that. So yeah, to me, these five vintage cards are anything but common. Last one, this is from my bestie Shane at Shoebox Legends. Shane has issued a one card challenge. He just wants to see one card that represents an important moment or year in history. So let's look at 1975. Uh, Frank Robinson becomes the first black manager in MLB history. So here is a signed sport magazine from May of 75. And here's his 1975 Topps card. And I'm already cheating by showing these other things. But the one card that best represents this whole thing is the 1975 Indians team card that I showed you earlier. So he was a player manager. And in his first game, first at bat, he homers, leading the Indians to a 5-3 to three win. Obviously a big, big step forward in further integrating baseball. And the team wasn't really built to win in those days, but he actually did an admirable job considering he had to deal with some very strong personalities. And then he went on to coach other teams, including the Giants, Orioles, Expos, and Nationals as late as 2006. So that's it for now. I'm not sure if I'll have enough time to do any more videos before that thing in Chicago later this month, but I will be around. Obviously, go check out Double D Vintage, Three Good Nerds, Cracker Jack Cards, Stooks Baseball Cards and Curiosities, Three Rivers Card Collector, Mr. Fisher Bike, and Chewbox Legends, if you're not familiar with any of those guys. And love your hobby and make it unique to you.